AJ. So come on down, AJ. <laughs> Stand up 
up and shout so we can hear. And I'm going to give you guys the mics. And you guys can just decide who would like to answer. You can give everybody the opportunity to answer. We will not have to. We're keeping it pretty chill and just taking it as it comes. So, right. with WooCommerce <clears throat> look like the rest of your theme? Like, what's the best approach to theme? How do I choose a theme? 
all the things about a fiend that won't let it get too close. <laughs> Cody's question was, what fiend, and how do you start with a fiend that's clean and lightweight and not bloated? Um, I don't think any of us have really pretty answers. Other than build it yourself and do it the right way. Well, well what about, talk about the process. You guys should all have something to say about that. Yeah, so um, here at Factor One, we've designed and developed about 300 sites in the last 12 years. We sold almost about 250 of them. We always start from the ground up what's the customer need, and nothing more, nothing less. Like, okay, what do they need now? What do they need here now? That's all we're going to build. Um, like you said, super light, super easy, long term, and it keeps pretty safe. Uh, we find buying things or using free things can be very bloated and heavy and slow. There are newer, faster ones that are coming out that have seen some good things for them. They still seem to be pretty heavy and too much scrutiny. So, I know that's not the, uh, the easy answer, but it's fair. Yeah, this is, uh, if you're building really advanced sites, there's a lot of really great feeds that are not loaded, but also if you're a super beginner, if you've never done this before, and you want just a really easy way to get started, just getting in and playing with something that's simple to use, like the storefront theme, will at least get you onboarded. It'll show you where the products are, it'll put them right on the front page, and you can start learning the process of WooCommerce. You can always come in and move your theme and try something out later, but at least it'll get you started. If you spend hours and days and months just trying to pick your theme, it starts getting really intimidating, and then you feel like, okay, I'm never going to get started and off the ground. So sometimes it's easier to just Go in and install the free plugin, go through the onboarding, pick it, that storefront theme, get yourself started, and then you can always suggest it. I do one idea on this. So, picking a theme that's WooCommerce compatible is key. There are a lot of themes out there that you can buy that have a built in shopping cart. Those will box you into that platform's thing at all times where WooCommerce is flexible. So, if you wanted to get a new theme in a year or two, most of your products, most of your systems will stay put within WooCommerce. Versus if you were to go to feed courses, buy a shopping cart theme, you can get in trouble. Where if they're not, you want to, you want to make sure there are WooCommerce uh, storefront packages. I think WooCommerce has some on their website as well, they're pretty good. Good enough. So WooCommerce is theme and storefront. Who themes? Uh, and so the, the basic recommendation is if you, if you don't know where you're going, Right, and you don't really want to do, and we're trying to learn WooCommerce, mm -hmm. most of the documentation is, is going to talk to you one way, and the storefront theme is going to reinforce that, right? So if there's a, a default feature from WooCommerce, right? You don't, the thing is, it's about those plugins and external themes, you don't know if they are actually supporting what WooCommerce documentation is saying. So in the beginning, just kind of stick with WooThemes, right? Or, sorry, WooCommerce, storefront things on the WooCommerce.com site. Uh, that's going to help you know your product and WooCommerce the best. If you go away from that to like Envato themes or some of these other ones, they actually implement their own plugins to solve problems to deal with, you know, how a product is merchandised, how its options are configured, uh, and they're going to actually change your admin a little bit, so you're going to have an experience that's specific to that theme. So if you want to focus on staying true to parity with WooCommerce, use the storefront field is what it's called. Uh, and that's a great basis to start if you don't want to have any confusion between what WooCommerce is supposed to be doing and what your theme maker may be trying to make for you. Um, I set up the WooCommerce site and the 
been checking after uh, I got it all running and working and everything seems to be fine. But I checked it on my phone, and when I go to the page where you pay, you know, kind of a thing, it now, because I only installed Sprite as the payment gateway, but it listed on my phone Apple Pay. Now, how did that get there? It's on the secret to this uh, liquor. So, um, Stripe, the question was how does Stripe work with Apple Pay? Um, and depending on how you set up Stripe uh, as a plugin inside of WooCommerce, um, you can enable what's called Apple Pay. Um, so if you are accessing your site from an Apple device and you have Apple Pay set up, uh, that little button that says Apple Pay will show up. And then all you have to do is click that and it will use uh, your Apple Pay uh, wallet. So then it uses your stored credit card and all the details that Apple has collected from you uh, to be able to check out a new site. So is there something I have to do on my end in order to set up the Apple Pay? Yeah, it was likely something inside of WooCommerce in the back end. This is the Stripe configuration. There's a, I think it's a checkbox that says enable uh, Apple Pay. Um, and once you click that, assuming Stripe is all set up correctly, that enables it on the front end. So if you access uh, the site with, uh, with like the newer MacBook Pros that have the um, little uh, the fingerprint reader in the corner or, or your iPhone or, or tablet. Um, if Apple Pay is available, it will show that in kind of the call to that first. Yeah, I guess maybe I'm a little still confused. Do I have to do something though? I mean, even though it's enabled on the site, is there something I have to do within Stripe other than check that box? Or is it no. does you Stripe take care of all the Apple Pay setup and all that yep. kind of thing? They take care of all of that. So all you have to do is you click that checkbox and you're good to go. But apparently I must work because it's there. Yeah. So I'm... Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That being said, it's probably always good to have somebody go through and test it and actually yeah. walk through the checkout and try right. to use it and right. make sure all the things are going through. Yeah, we did do that. We walked through and kept the Stripe payment under you know, with regular credit card. That worked fine. We haven't tried the Apple Pay yet. Yeah, you, you don't want the first person to buy something and not right. someone you know and someone you can fix. <laughs> right. And just one more thing. Stripe has its own settings for like accepting ACH and other payment methods. And it may not be in the WooCommerce part, but maybe in, in Stripe. Yeah, we are right. right. for right. Apple Pay. Right. And when the nice thing about when it's on Stripe side, it's not that the configuration thing you're using. Stripe's handling all of that. Right. They're going to deposit the money from Apple Pay to your account, however you have it set up. So that's going to happen apparently. Point in case, we should all have like a one dollar product, right? And walk through the purchase and get the kind of crazy. So while we're setting it up. What are your um, high recommended plugins? Because I feel like right now when I'm developing, it's really slow to load. And, and from my understanding, it's slow because I have too many plugins. So. I'm going to answer for that. He's going to say no plugin. Come on, let's play on. You know, plugins are tough. And I don't, I don't, I don't even think we have a list of plugins that we're like, Favorites to when it's like theme builders, we use like paper builder at Mod Effect, right? Uh, you know, some of this is more what's your preference in management, and you know, how important is that speed? Uh, you, you, you always can't have it that way. I, I think what's the what's the triad? How would you like it? Do you want your project done fast? Do you want it done inexpensively, or do you want it done with all features? And the kind of the joke is choose two. You'll never get all three. Like it's just an impossibility. So, like if you're saying, hey, what's what's the plugin that makes it fast? Like that's kind of not right? Like it's it's, it's it doesn't really happen. Uh, you know. So researching the plugins is going to be important. Uh, setting up a stage site, making sure your host has an easy way to set up the stage site. Turning on uh, plugins. Getting it so it's publicly accessible, but it doesn't, you know, accidentally get called by a search engine or things you'll want to consider. And then hitting, you know, the page speed analysis, the tools like Google, you know, uh, are really, 
your only way to to, to figure out that struggle from my point of view. I don't, I don't know if anything that's just like, here's what we use, you know, don't stray from it. It's more uh, tasks. Okay, so there's two ways to test this. Uh, one is an old code endpoint called P3 Profiler. So the letter P and the number three and then the profiler. Um, the P3 Profiler is going to run a performance test based on the load of all the plugins. It still works. Last time we used it about, let's see, kind of debated in about two years. Um, it's going to run a load test. It'll tell you which plugins are causing the most load. And if it's just something obscure and you can replace this thing else, um, like it comes like form systems, um, C, uh, contact form 7, CS7 is god awful slow and gravity forms is fast. So it's an easy swap, like not just a different form on it. What's the other one? Oh, just on the, like, a form, like from a form system, there's uh, like, contact form 7. Yeah, what's the alternate one? Gravity forms. Oh, gravity forms. Yeah, so like, it's just one of those things where CS7 is slow, gravity forms is fast. It's easy to switch. Uh, where WooCommerce is the big thing you're using, is that might have its own load. You can't do anything about that. It's okay, great. So, what else can you do? Uh, so, P3 profiler works really well. The other thing you can do, and it doesn't have these really clear, like, red flags, would be uh, shut them off one by one. And then you go to a site like GT Metrics, like GT and GTRIX.com. Uh, GT Metrics will do a speed test, it works really well. You'll be able to see. Um, site load time, and it'll tell you what's causing it to load slow. So if your back end is loading slow, definitely plug in. If your front end is loading slow, it could be server response, it could be the theme, it could be images, it could be a hundred things. And GT Metrics will give you a wide, wide, wide item of what's, what's going well for you, and what's going okay, and what's going bad. Um, we want sites on our end to load faster than three seconds, and I have some WooCommerce stores that load more quick on it. Huge images. It's, it's really, really video so you can kind of get the ins and outs of uh, all about WooCommerce. Uh, they just released a new WordPress one to get you all updated on Gutenberg. Uh, anybody else that has other sites? Uh, LearnWP is another one. Like, I think it's just Yep. What is it? Lard? Learn. Okay. LearnWP.com. Uh, they have video training. WP Like WP has a video training library. We include that, we launched a site, there's a whole video training library to make the admin, right? Getting the video. So then as WordPress updates, all of our sites have updated videos built into it. So if you're talking about you delivering sites to somebody, uh, the Diddy Team would have license for years to create. Full screen iMac 5K all the time. A little more to load fast too. 
And so we use different image thumbnails for different screen sizes. So we'll actually dump the 5K image for a smaller image on a tablet or a smaller image on a phone. Um, so I go based on the resolution of the device, more so than the resolution of the image, and use multiple versions of the same image. That way I can get the high res for the high res people and low res for the low people. And then uh, AJ, your answer about which one is the best hosting ever, and ever, and ever. Yeah. Everybody? No. <laughs> um, I, so I, I, I love that question, but I hate that question at the same time because I don't like to, to pit different companies against each other. So what I'll say is, um, I think each host has its own unique advantages and disadvantages. It really depends on what uh, you're looking to do. If you're going to create a um, brochure where your website where you're maybe not updating content a lot, um, you, know, you could probably be on a shared platform that is, is a lower co uh, lower monthly cost uh, in hosting, something that's going to cache a lot because you're not updating content. But if you're updating content regularly, um, you're, you're doing something with video or images, um, you know, you're going to want something a little bit more powerful. Um, and so I think it really just depends on what you're looking for. And then I can also pass it over to Tara because she works at GoDaddy. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, agree. <laughs> now, we uh, do the same split of the share hosting and manage workers, and there's a lot of companies that have both.
right? Uh, in, in AWS, our database server was costing us somewhere close to about $3,000 a day when we did it, right? So if, if my thing and the hard perception of people who are used to these like uh, uh, hosting companies that, that buy uh, basically people's uh, undersold inventory and they buy big blocks and you just go to a C panel and you pay a few dollars or it's even free, the jump to actually go into what does it take to run a, a transactional e-commerce store is an order of magnitude higher. So don't focus on the cheapness of the plan is, is the biggest bridge, or you're gonna hate every company you go to, right? And so like, you know, even 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 at, at like Motive Back and Up, you know, some of the hosting will help people with starts at three hundred dollars a month, right? There's no six dollar option, right? So the biggest thing isn't, isn't like what's the best hosting company. I think the thing to digest is like who's actually capable of hosting a, a, a site that's going to be running transactions and really be much more intense about improving per user basis, right? Uh, and, and you should be looking for people that have language around WooCommerce specifically and the transaction process and what it takes to do that. So I think that's the first mindset and then change from there to who's the best host. Then we'll have them do the algorithm and see the difference. I have a question, but I also wanted to comment on what you just said. Because um, I have a background in high performance computing. So there's a short list of possible bottlenecks that you can have. And whether it's this IO or a temporary or database or whatever. The, the question that happens with multi tenant systems is that if the length of time it takes for individual transactions stacks up, then the transactions stay in memory longer. And so on multi tenant systems, this, this can really get out of whack. And so my recommendation is to um, have uh, a strategy of building the hardware such that you remove those bottlenecks. Now, when you talk to your service provider, uh, you can get an SLA, and of course they'll tell you like if they're using SSDs versus NVMe versus hard drive or whatever. Um, but like you said, I like how you said that uh, it's not about what host, it's about whether that host does what you want. Um, uh, but my question is, can you compare and contrast WooCommerce to some of the other things like open source? Or Sorry, what was that? Compare WooCommerce to, to what? Open Cart or some of the other areas that you have. Like, if each of you could just speak about it a little bit. I know it's a very open-ended question, but like, if you had to give like quick pros and cons between WooCommerce and Open Cart or other solutions. So I'll go with so compare and contrast WooCommerce to other. Okay, so um, uh, I host and manage sites like Shopify on WooCommerce, on ASP down at Storefront, on non-commerce, on uh, uh, Magento, and uh, custom built, right? Uh, PHP and, and .NET. Um, I think more or less WooCommerce, there's kind of a open open source be able to roll your own, uh, or a software as a service kind of solution like Shopify is. Uh, Big Commerce is a little bit. Volusion is actually managed some Volusion too. Uh, and, and then there's kind of like own and host and manage your own. There are also hybrid solutions of like WooCommerce as a service, like press a button that's lit up for you. You know, go nuts, have fun. Uh, Man, it's, it's really tough to compare and contrast the differences. So in Shopify, Shopify really is your platform. They're going to be your payment gateway, right? Uh, so you can be your own payment gateway, but then they're going to charge you they're your next partner because if you remove their gateway, they charge you a percentage of your sales, right? Uh, so if you don't want that relationship, in that case, uh, again, Shopify is like the biggest SaaS out there uh, and the fastest growing. So they're the, the um, uh, the plus thousand pound gorilla in your So at, at this point, like uh, Shopify is going to be its own checkout process. Like you might have your own branded domain, right? 
uh, but Shopify will actually be, when they go to the checkout, it'll be like mydomain.shopify.com. And they, they take over everything from there. So if there's anything you want to do that's important to you, your brand, your process as a business, it's going to happen in the checkout, say goodbye to Shopify, they're no longer candidate, right? Then we are in something that's going to be a WooCommerce, right? Or a, you know, write your own code solution. Uh, Shopify itself uh, and, and big commerce uh, and some of these illusions, uh, what you can do in their card is limited by what access they've allowed other developers and, and basically at the middle what what plugin or app can you get. And with Shopify, the biggest thing that I've noticed, and, and quite frankly I like as a development partner, is that everything's done in a monthly fee. So if I do something, I get to now charge a monthly fee to everyone who uses my plugin. Right, I don't get to buy a component, uh, or the customers get to buy it once, they pay me forever afterwards. Uh, you know, if you want to go beyond that, the very next step besides Shopify is becoming Shopify Plus, and that starts at $2,000 a month, right? So at some point, you know, uh, and then you can, you can modify the checkout a little bit, right? But you're already at $2,000 a month. How far could you take $2,000 a month from e-commerce? That's the question I started. And you can go really darn far, right? Uh, and, and so, you know, that's where you start evaluating trade-offs at that level. Uh, if you don't want to mess with a lot, configure a lot, think about a lot, if you have that t-shirt you want to sell, that shirt singular, right? Go Shopify, forget about it. There's much other things going on, much more things going on that are important to your time that are maybe building your brand or whatever that shirt is, right? You know, if, if you have, and you're working on digital continuity for a business, and you are involving that website in a lot more of your processes, move to WooCommerce now. Get it figured out, right? And start extending where you can in all the various places that you can, because now it's open to you. And if you need to, you can have full control. You can take over the development, you can take over the hosting of it, you can put it in a machine by your bed if that helps you sleep at night. Right, you own it, right? And, and so there's value in that, and those those end up becoming where you choose your trade off, right? Uh, that's just my opinion. Just to add to that, I think that's a really good point. Um, Thank you. 
So I've got the other two group products in. So there, there's, there's no one who owns the responsibility of PCI compliance except yourself. Your website is one tiny facet of 180 questions, right? So uh, your payment processing goes to how do you take payments over the phone if you do? How do you store and manage that data and information, right? There's, there's, there's so much more, and it's, it's also payment card information. It's not just the card number, right? But what, what does it make? You know, is, what's their name? I and mean, that's payment card information. Um, so in, in the end, like, it's a, if, if someone says you're BCI compliant because you use Shopify, they are misguiding you. Okay, and that is absolutely not true. End of statement. You still have other practices and policies that you have to testify, uh, attest to that you do in order to pass a PCI compliance. Most of the time, when you're a Shopify person, let's be honest, there are people who don't make money on the internet. Okay? But in the sense that to get your first level of PCI, I forget what the tiers are called and what the levels go, but the first one is a million dollars. You can self um, report. And, and take a, 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 the, the uh, sorry, my brain's not working right now, but there, there's basically a, a SAQ, self-assessment questionnaire, and there's SAC A and SAC B and some other ones. Um, I should know a lot more about this when my, my brain's not working, but you can, you can do that under, under a million. When you do like a million to two million, you have to have some other things certified. By the time you hit six million a year, you have to have an external company certified, right? And it's not just your website. And that doesn't matter if you're on Shopify or whatever. Platform. So that's just a major fallacy. No one is PCI compliant because they use any particular payment gateway or platform. Uh, so the one thing I want to add to that is it also depends on the bank that you use. Uh, we have a lot of customers uh, that use Bank of America, and Bank of America requires you to use Trustway, which is one of those uh, third-party uh, service providers that will test PCI compliance. So they're going to run a series of tests against your domain and then, and then give you a report. It's going to look like crazy stuff that you don't necessarily know. And you're going to give it to your host, or in this case Shopify, and they're just going to say, okay, well, we only do these things and the rest are on you. So depending on that bank as well, you do have, you do have some concerns there. Or you use Stripe, it doesn't matter which PCI compliance on they don't ask, they don't, it's, they say that they're going to be PCI compliant on their end for their part of the transaction. And like John said, like, if, they're, if that's the only place you're accepting credit cards, then that's the only place you can be PCI compliant. If you're accepting credit cards over the phone, a whole other can of worms. But if it's just the website and Shopify is the merchant or uh, Stripe is the merchant or PayPal is the merchant, then you don't have to actually worry about anything to answer your question correctly. Uh, so yeah, if you're going to go to Stripe or PayPal, you can still use Google Powers, and no one's going to ask you to fill out a 200 question self-assessment self of things you have no idea what they're talking about. I'm highly technical on what does this even mean, so I'm with you. Um, so Stripe and PayPal will meet you around as well. Can I ask one last question yeah. about, it's a e-commerce question. So when, Tara, you were saying that you can have memberships with WooCommerce, so can you have, like, if you set up webinars and you want people to, people want to pay monthly as opposed to paying one for a chunk, is that something that WooCommerce can do? That's one question. And then the other question is, if you're also doing speaking where you have multiple options for that product, for speaking just like a t-shirt has different colors and sizes and all that stuff, same exact thing, but you're speaking. Can you use those same qualities of WooCommerce that you would use for a t-shirt to use for services? OK, so our question was about uh, membership billing and subscriptions, as well as variations on things that are not a product. Like a t-shirt has a, a color or a size, and her, her speaking engagement might have different tiers to that. Uh, that's mainly what we use e-commerce for. I don't run a lot of e-commerce like product sites that are shipped. Most of the e-commerce sites we run are membership-based systems. So I have an art school that has 
4,000 members that pay a couple hundred dollars a month that run uh, 60 courses and 400, 500 lessons, which is pretty crazy. We have audit classes where they can't audit without teacher review. So the class is $500 or $100 for audit only. And I'm using a digital variation. Uh, those are all monthly based billing, and so all our clients are on the subscription plugin. So WooCommerce, WooCommerce themselves, WooThemes makes a subscriptions plugin that's $200 a year. They handles all of our monthly transactions. Customers then get a dashboard where they can manage their credit card, change the credit card, cancel their subscription. And I get to manage the rules. If they, if they cancel the subscription, do they lose access immediately or at the next building? Um, so they can cancel it and still get the remaining 22 days left on the building. That's all WooCommerce, that's yeah. not PayPal or Stripe or any well, it, other it's still through, um, it's managed through Gateway. And so Stripe stores the credit card, WooCommerce is strictly. Okay. So Stripe is being safe and secure, the credit card is not stored on your website at all. Um, Stripe is storing that for us. So you have to use a subscription-based system uh, as far as merchant goes. So you have to authorize that then account with what's called CIM, um, PayPal, or Stripe. Save our credit card data. Um, the really great thing there is it can be a whole other level of tools. So we had a bunch of customers we had to give a big refund to where they got double billed once. We had, we had an issue with the code. Um, 80 customers got double billed one day. Issues. Uh, issues. Uh, 80 customers got double billed one day. Um, I can go into Stripe and bulk refund 80 people one of the transactions out. It's like I was able to do all the Stripe interface. They did a touch of the Yeah, so the subscription is just a subscription. It's setting up reoccurring billing, whether it's six payments and it's over, or it's monthly indefinitely. Um, that's just the money side of it. You still have to deal with what do they get access to. Um, there's membership plugins, there's another uh, online education platform, so you can use it with your YouTube stuff. Uh, you can move to an online learning model that's a member base. And so one of those plugins out there is called Sensei. It's about another $200 to $200 a year. Um, that's how we manage 60 courses, four or 500 lessons. It's all Sensei. And that's an e-commerce plugin? It is. It's a really great system. Uh, it's fairly complicated to get built. Out of the box, <coughs> I've never gotten to work out of the box without a ton of tinkering. Uh, you can't just install it and it'll run. Uh, it's more complicated than e-commerce <coughs> as far as the setup and the options go. Uh, you can do sequential based learning where you must finish lesson one before you go to lesson two. You can do drip based where it's lesson one is here and you have 30 days and then you move on to lesson two automatically. You cannot, you cannot just take lesson after lesson after lesson. So I have a client who does a online, online early childhood development education for parents to teach emotional therapy to their children. It's a six month program. There's six one hour videos. You cannot just shotgun all the ones. You have to trickle the system. You have to wait six months to get all the way. This is all through Sensei. It's through Sensei. Sensei plus subscriptions. Plus subscriptions. Uh, yes. And so and then for them, we're selling the Sensei as a product. You can also sell this as a group. So my online art school, there's 60 lessons. I don't need to have 60 products. We have a tier. There's a uh, drawing, there's painting, and there's a master There's only really three tiers. And that defines the price. The master tier, which is all of it, is $500 a month. And that's a group. So we're using uh, what's called groups for WooCommerce. Just groups, G R O U T S. Yes, uh, yeah, so groups for WooCommerce allows us to have access to the group based on a subscription. And so if you're a part of the master group, you get access to everything that's every post, every page, every lesson that has the master level group to it. And so it's how you want to control it. There's a lot of options within the system. So WooCommerce is pretty powerful. So, that's my favorite thing is WooCommerce. Right there, my jam. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah, it's eight thirty. Time for one more quick question. Or we're good. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. We um, it's already just about eight thirty, so we're going to wrap things up. Um, we give a round of applause for. Our
best parts about WooCommerce, or, well, yeah, WooCommerce and WordPress is not just the software, but the community that surrounds it. And you'll hear that from other open source communities that what separates us is our community itself. So um, I just can't preach it enough. So that wrap things up. Uh, we have, gosh, already. Next week is Tempe, or Tempe meetup. <laughs> it's just a <stressing. laughs> um, So hope you guys can come out there. There'll be lots of general WordPress questions and answers there. Uh, we're Kit Phoenix, we cannot push that enough. You guys will, it, it's three days full of awesome content for you guys. Um, it's gonna be great. Register and come out afterward. We will not talk officially on the mic where we'll meet up, but we will meet up uh, really close to downtown. Okay. If you guys have any other questions, I'm going to say if you can approach any of you guys at all right now for a few minutes and then um, otherwise we'll continue to other places. Thanks so much.